when you want to do something for the first time, do you go straight to YouTube to see how someone else did it or do you try yourself first? We like trying ourselves first. You learn something. So here's the deal. We wanted to, we had to refill our toner cartridges or buy new ones. And instead of YouTubing how someone else did it, we're gonna show you on YouTube how we did it without going on YouTube, if that makes any sense at all. So, what I had here, I, 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 you'll see in the video, but I bought some powder toner and all it came with was some crappy uh, photocopied instructions. And well, we, we started with these instructions and zero plan. We figured it out as we went along. And we started out with black. Here's the first cartridge. Okay, we're gonna try and place the toner on our uh, cartridge here. Never done this before. I haven't watched a YouTube video. I have instructions that came with, I bought this stuff. Uh, let me give you a little context here. Five years ago, my, my printer said low toner. I haven't changed it since, and it's been working for five years. Two years, two, three, two or three years ago, I bought some toner. I still never, I'm gonna change it now because one of my printing labels came out uh, a little bit on the, on the light side, but I did a test print and it looks great. Yeah, a, B, C, all the colors look great. The, I'm gonna change it anyway. So I took the black one out um, and the instructions uh, basically say, you know, there's a refill hole and then they give you these gears just in case you're using starter cartridges. I'm not using starter cartridges because I uh, these are actual real toner cartridges. So I'm going to follow the instructions. See, the thing is, when you take this toner out of the printer, it's not, you can't just replace it. You have to take the actual toner area and there's a little notchy. Press this and this just comes right out. Really simple. And as you can see here, it says you're going to avoid the warranty. I, this thing is expired. My printer is like 10 years old. So, so I spend the next six minutes or so fiddling with a screwdriver and, uh, and that paper that's on the outside, thinking that I, I needed to worry about that paper. Um, what I learned during the first cartridge was that uh, the screwdriver wasn't the right tool and I learned how to take the little rubber uh, uh, seal out. Um, this was a good learning experience because I realized what tools I shouldn't use and what I should and shouldn't waste my time doing. It feels like it's all, this is why they give you gloves. So now you just take one of these plastic rings and you jam it in there. There, looks done to me. Just gotta clean this off a little bit with a little, I don't know, paper towel. And we'll see. Okay, as you can see there, the uh, first cartridge was a minor fail. We kinda cracked it, it took a long time. We, we, we figured out what not to do, and that was using a screwdriver. So, what we did with that knowledge we gained from the first stuff, uh, fail was go on to the yellow card. And here's what happened. I learned from my mistakes. Number one, don't use a screwdriver to pop that top off. I ended up cracking the plastic housing on the toner cartridge. And I decided I wasn't gonna wear gloves, but I'm gonna wear gloves because I had to wash my hands. I made a little bit of a mess here, as you can see. Um, so for this next clip, I, I decided that uh, gloves were a good idea and we're gonna go try out the uh, yellow cartridge. And my first thing, my alternative to the screwdriver was wire cutters, which wasn't a good idea, nor was it a good idea to snip the, uh, the nozzle of the toner. I ended up using scissors for that. Make the nozzle of the toner uh, powder uh, bigger. That was pretty much it. Okay, I got four different kinds of pliers here I'm gonna try out. The thing with this, to getting this rubber piece out, so you need leverage, you need some sort of angle, and that's why I broke the, uh, the piece the first time. So I found a, a pair of needle nose pliers to use. And it took me a while to figure out the best way to do it, is to, is to jam it in uh, between the seal and the uh, edge of the opening. And then now I uh, use my new wire opening uh, toner uh, powder 
and it seemed to work uh, pretty fast. And I put the thing back in and that was it. So as you can see there, we, um, after the yellow cartridge, we kind of found our groove a little bit better. Uh, we found the right tool after one experiment and then we finally, we, we figured out the right tool to use. And we had a couple other improvements in there, like including opening the toner uh, bottle a little bit more. So what happened after that? We went on to magenta. Okay, now we're on to the magenta. Let's see if I can do this faster now, now that I have most of my um, errors out of the way. We'll start by taking out the toner bin. So I did it again with the magenta uh, cartridge, but I tried pulling it out from the middle and that didn't work because the rubber seal was just kind of fragile. So I had to go back to the old way of doing it and jamming it in between the edge. And this one worked uh, pretty well as, as you can see here. I made a little bit of a mess, but uh, it, was, it was pretty good overall. All right, so after the third cartridge, um, we got it really into our groove. We got almost everything uh, sorted out. We, we were able to get the, the little seal out better. Um, we still ran into problems with the toner itself. And we figured that out in, uh, in the cyan or blue, as they say, which was the final cartridge where we kind of hit a home run. Here we, ha we have the uh, cyan, blue. So I'm gonna cut my little piece off. I'm gonna do this first this time. So I don't have to hold the toner cartridge up while I do this. JL Toner is where I got this. It's not sponsored in any way. So by the time we got to the fourth cartridge, the blue one, uh, we, we had our system down pat. Um, it came out quick, uh, the toner went right in, we had it, we set up the toner ahead of time, and it worked out uh, quite nice. A little bit of a mess to do it this way, um, but uh, it was $23 for uh, five uh, toner refills, uh, which is cheaper, it's 50% uh, cheaper than buying the no-name brand. That's it. All right, as you can see, we nailed the cyan. It was, it, the, the top came out quick, and we even uh, prepped our toner bottle ahead of time so that when once we got the top out, we were ready to go with the toner instead of having to fiddle and remove that safety seal, which is ridiculous. They had a safety seal, like I'm gonna eat toner. But it worked out pretty good. Now here's a little uh, wrap up about, uh, a little overhead wrap up of what we talked about in terms of our experience. That's the tool I used for uh, the uh, pulling of the plug was this uh, vice grip plier. And I just grabbed it and yanked it out. The screwdriver didn't work well. I ended up cracking one toner cartridge. But uh, the instructions are very fairly simple. For 23 bucks, I filled four toner cartridges. Uh, I'm not sure how much they, it's in the hundreds. or I forget, I'll look it up right now. The official brother Four pack of toner, it's $233 on Amazon, and I paid $23, so 10% of the cost of genuine um, brother toner cartridges. And just for comparison, I have a five pack, a no name brand called Easy Ink. You get uh, four new toner cartridges plus an extra black one for $52. Got three and a half stars on Amazon. So whatever that means. And actually, we have another one that's $43 for four with no extra black. Um, so for twice as much about, you can just buy new toner cartridges and be done with it. But if you value your 20 or 30 or $40, uh, you can just do it yourself. So that's it, we'll see how long they last. Cut. Final scene now. Okay, so we changed our toner by ourselves without looking at YouTube. Now, it was a success. Um, maybe I wouldn't have made a couple mistakes if I, if I watched YouTube videos ahead of time, but I, I learned. I learned to be more patient, to, do, to be more slow, and I think I reminded myself 
of the fact that before you start anything you haven't done before, unless you're in a hurry and you need to know and you don't want to be bothered, I think so, there's a lost art of, of examining something, carefully inspecting something before you begin. Don't be hasty when it comes to trying something new. And even if you don't do it the first day or the first time, inspect it, think about it, contemplate what you're doing. Um, if I would have spent a little more time, because I did this live on, on, uh, on under my video board. If I would have spent a little more time examining it and looking at it, I probably wouldn't have cracked the first toner cartridge and I probably wouldn't have used um, uh, the screwdriver. But I think physical tinkering was necessary for me to realize that the screwdriver wasn't a good idea. Um, I might have been able to use some sort of... Uh, a wider plier to slowly nudge up the uh, the little lip. I don't know, um, but I think it was extremely worth it for me to, to get that experience. Still, no matter how old you are, because um, it reminds you, number one, to, to, to carefully do things and never be hasty. And uh, I feel good that I did it without any help. And that's, uh, that's, that's something to be... Uh, to, proud of in 2019. Um, for $23, I, I replaced the toner in four cartridges. It's like five or six bucks a, a cartridge. Um, for just about double that amount of money, that 45, 50 bucks, you can buy knockoffs, which are suspicious uh, to begin with, um, but it's cheap. I mean, printers are commodities these days. So I don't know, maybe next time I'll, I'll just buy the, uh, the knockoffs. But at least I have this experience under my belt. So what do you do? Do you YouTube it first? Or do you give it a shot and learn and keep that memory in your head forever?